welcome to season one of the Mindfulness Pilates podcast. I'm Beverly Densham, Pilates teacher of over 22 years. I really look forward to bringing you tips to reduce back pain and feel good, relaxation, positive affirmation and inspiration every week to inspire you in body and mind for more relaxation, stretching, core, back strength and happiness. So big welcome Sarah to today's Mindfulness Pilates um, I was about to say class, podcast, podcast. I think it's because I've taught you Pilates today, haven't I? No. Uh, so it's so wonderful to have Sarah Estelle here today. Would you just like to say hi and um, a bit about you and your work as well before we start chatting no about your journey? Well, first of all, Beth, thank you for inviting me. Um, so I'm Sarah Estelle. I'm a nature guide. I'm a mentor to healing business owners um, and a priestess of the new earth. My passion and area of expertise is in flower and vibrational essences. And I also just love to support healers of all kinds to transform their lives and their businesses with nature as their guide. Yeah, it's beautiful. That's what I'm about. Yeah, it's beautiful work. And whereabouts are you in the world? Well, I'm from the UK, as you can probably tell from how I speak, but I live and have done since 2015 in southwest France, just north of Bordeaux. So we're very blessed to live in a very beautiful place, very rural, which is cool, um, sometimes a tad challenging because <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I've always lived in towns or cities. So although being in the countryside feels like a dream, it it brings its challenges with it, you know, but um, all in all, we're very blessed to be here and very happy that we made the leap to, to come to France. Yeah, lovely. And so let's talk about your, your um, Pilates journey from when you started to where you are um, working with me now. So how did you get into your Pilates? What was the reason for starting? Um, a very, very sore back. Um, I've had sore backs on and off through my life. Um, I didn't really know why. Um, I've been, I'm not a kind of like fitness person that kind of goes out doing vigorous exercise, but I've always enjoyed moving and I'm, I've always been reasonably fit. Um, in my, I guess, and it was maybe at the beginning of my 30s, something like that, I started to have pain in my back essentially and it kind of it was at a time when I was very unhappy in my life my 30s were not happy time in my life and that kind of went through to my med, mid 40s for all different reasons it's actually why I got why I went towards flower essences to help me because I was emotionally very unhappy mm, and what came with it was the structure of my body played up big time mm. um, and so I discovered when it went like really bad, um, and this happened for a couple of years on different times, where the top half of my body and the, my like my chest, if you like this bit, and my hips were in completely different places. And I didn't know, I saw an osteopath and I went used to go and see a Chinese doctor and all of this really, really helped for acupuncture. But they were all saying, wow, look at your back. You've got such an amazing scoliosis how are you functioning in life you know because with that shape of your back I mean obviously acutely now you're not happy but they kind of knew me beforehand they were kind of saying mm. how come you know so I started talking to my family and they was and it was confirmed that in my early 20s no actually it wasn't my 20s in I think actually in my teens actually my mum had taken me to a checkup with the doctor and they had picked up on the scoliosis then and I didn't even know about it I'd kind of completely forgotten that I had this back that wasn't really any good for weight bearing so as soon as I got very stressed or tried to do things like and this is not a judgment on yoga classes at all I would love to take part in yoga classes I love I love the idea of it and the flow of it but whenever I take part in yoga 
I hurt my back. And there were just certain things that hurt my back. And I didn't really know why that was. And so this big episode kind of happened mid 40s, late 40s, and it was quite debilitating on many levels, went on a long time. I slowly recovered. And I think it was my chiropractor said to me, why don't you try some Pilates? Mm. So I, you know, found a local class and have never looked back. It's just something that suits my body beautifully. I've never hurt myself doing Pilates ever. Mm. Um, I really enjoy the classes. I feel well when I come out of them. Um, I am a tai-, tai Chi instructor, and so mm-hmm. I do do Tai Chi. And so I think that has been helpful as well. But it's a different, Tai Chi is more about energy flow and strong legs and all that kind mm-hmm. of thing. I needed something that would basically bring my, you know, support my structure. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think the shape of my back has changed, um, but it's been probably a good 10 years now since I've had an episode. Mm. I do have to be a little bit careful. Um, yeah. You know, for, for example, if I go to airports or something, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying suitcases and things like that. I've had to learn to sort of look after my back. Mm. I can remember the chiropractor saying to me, you know, you don't have a back that weight bears. You haven't got the loading for that. So it these were all very empowering things for me to hear that that's why my upper body strength isn't huge and all that kind of thing it's it's kind of my shape um so I've just honored that and found ways around it Mm. and um yeah so I'm delighted to be able to carry on doing Pilates via the classes that you're offering Bev yeah so how have you found it going from in-person classes to obviously I always teach my mindfulness classes membership and classes online on zoom now and it's wonderful that you know you're in France and my mum's 120 miles away or you know somebody else is 150 miles away or Ireland or wherever or all, all over the UK how, how have you found it going from the in-person to um, on zoom with me it's been a very easy transition for me um I'm very au fait with online learning because it's what I do myself. Even before this global situation happened, I was teaching online and most of my own business is online. And of course, living in a country that's not my own, if you like, my family and friends are all back in the UK. So I'm also an Aquarian. So I'm very, you know, Aquarians are usually plugged into the technology side of things. So Mm. it's fine. It's fine. It's different. It's different, but it's fine. Um, I enjoy the classes. They're easy to, it's easy to follow along. I love that I don't have to go anywhere. It's it's what I was kind of alluding to before, although it's lovely living in the countryside and France is such a big country compared to the UK. So a local class was like 45 minutes away. Mm. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I was traveling 45 minutes, coming back 45 minutes, which was fine. There's, you know, it's all good in many ways, but online is just so much more convenient. And obviously in the limited world that we have right now, it's just been, it's been really good to um, be able to move. Um, I love that we get the replays of your classes. So if we can't attend, we can watch the replays and we feel, well, I do anyway, I feel as if I'm there live. Um, Mm. If I want to do an extra class, I can use the replay. Um, So it gives me many advantages to an in-person class, actually. There are more advantages than disadvantage is not really a word but there are many benefits let's just put it that way yeah and I can still correct you I can still see you You can still talk to me I can still talk to you it can still be precise you can still work at your level can't you it's not a copy me sort of thing is it yeah I mean you're very good at giving people different levels of things and you know just encouraging us all to say how we feel so yeah it works really 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 well I'm very grateful that I spotted that you were doing it and I was like, me. 
<laughs> yeah, and that was actually before the pandemic, interestingly. I decided to start working that way. And you were the first one to say, yes, please. And then it's like, my mum's like, yes, please. And then my sister's like, yes, please. And then and then obviously it's just growing and it's growing and growing all the time. Which yeah, definitely... it was interesting that I was just really happy to find you even before all this started. Mm. So even if the world wasn't like it is right now, I would still be in your in the classes, you know. Yeah. Exactly. That's what everyone else is, is, is the same, actually. And how do you find I, I give you a little six minutes to practice every morning or every day? How, how are you finding that helping you? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I just I'm, I don't always do my six minutes, actually. I'm just being honest there. But I what is good about it is that I know that it's good for me. Um, and let's say a good half of the week I manage it. Um, which is good. So I have a little set of exercises that I know kind of set my back up for the day. And what I do actually really notice is because my work is, because my business is online and all, all the stuff that we know about, um, I do a lot of sitting and 2020 was a sitting year for me, which wasn't great for my back. So what mm -hmm. I have noticed is that when I start my day with my six minutes, when I then go in front of my computer and do what I need to do, my back is a lot more comfortable than if I don't do it. So just yeah. a tiny few tiny exercises during the day can make a huge difference to just, I, I'm not quite sure how it works. I'm sure you do just kind of like getting all the bones and muscles in place <clears throat> before yeah. I begin my day. Is that, is that how it works? Well, it's interesting. No, no one's asked me it like that. I think it's it helps set you up in mind and body. You, I mean, I mean, I'm obviously getting you to breathe and relax. But it's just a little lying down, little lying down session, isn't it? And of course, it does line you up. It does line, you know, your head, neck, shoulders, back, all up as nicely as it can do. It helps you settle into a good position for the exercise. It helps you feel calm, peaceful, and relaxed, ready to then do those basic stretching and core stability yeah. exercises and they just really counteract anything that you might have been doing like computer too much computer work or whatever it just it's just like a rebalancing of your of your body it's maintenance more than anything it's basic it's very basic maintenance that makes you feel good to start your day really yeah so it makes it does make a huge difference <clears throat> yes. yeah oh that's very good it's very good though but it's good you do the the longer replays because um Obviously, that's fantastic. That's very impressive. <laughs> Not everybody does that. <laughs> but everyone seems to do it if they've missed a week, then they all seem to always do it, which is great. Um, yeah, yeah really it's good. just a really good way of keeping your body toned. Um, obviously, there are higher levels of things that we can tap into if we want to. It's very, um, it's Pilates is the kind of thing as well. For example, like this morning in our class, for, for no reason that there was logical to me, I was I felt quite tired. So I just did the more gentle, basic versions. And other weeks, we can just tap into doing something a little bit more challenging for our bodies. Yeah, it's about listening to your body. And that's that the best Pilates, the perfect Pilates is doing, as you say, the right level for you and listening to your body that day um, and not always doing the same thing or trying to push yourself, as you say it then you're going to get the most benefits that day. Yeah, and I've, I've learned as well in a hard way is that when I do push myself, that's when my back doesn't like it. So I've, I've kind of learned the hard way. And as I've got older, as mm. I guess we get wiser and we start to listen. And I, I know now it's not about heroics. I know it's not about, you know, this, this is about my well-being this isn't about my shape although it could help with that it's not about my stamina although it could help with that and it does help with that it's about me yeah. being well yeah yeah that's really it's really true how do you like the the relaxing and breathing elements you always do a little bit breathing relaxing at the beginning for a minute or more and then you always do a five minute relaxation at the end. How do you enjoy and like that bit? I really like those bits, yeah. In my first Pilates class in the UK, we always relaxed at the end. And I love those bits. Um, in the classes that I found in France, but again, I don't want to sound judgmental at all. They were both really, really good classes. The teachers were excellent, but we didn't do the re relaxation. Hmm. And so I was delighted to find that you do because yeah. it kind of suits me, that kind of thing. And just, 
being a, a quite um, an achieving type person. I need spaces and I need to be encouraged to be still because left to my own devices, I might not. <laughs> the thing is, I think it's a, I think it's a highly creative entrepreneur. I think, you know, I obviously teach myself what I need to learn. So I practice what I teach. Um, but I think also as a creative entrepreneur, by get, doing the relaxation and meditation, that makes you even more inspired. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I have my own ways of relaxing and it's a big part of my day. It's how I start my day. Um, yeah. You know, just relaxing my brain mostly. Um, so it's always good to be encouraged to relax my body in, in the right ways, you know, rather than just sitting down or reading a book, you know, actually taking this body of mine that's got this interesting shape into um, mm. into more alignment and I I really do and again I don't want to sort of like go on about the shape of my back because if you were to see me you wouldn't think oh my goodness this woman's a strange shape but um, when people look at my back they say lots of professionals have said you know you, I mean, it's not like a ridiculous scoliosis, but it's fairly pronounced. And in theory, if you followed a sort of more straight mainstream medical model, I wouldn't, I shouldn't be as mobile or as flexible as I am. So I really put it down to the years of Tai Chi that I've done and, mm. and the years of Pilates that have kept me mobile and reasonably pain free. It, my body doesn't hurt when I move, but, you know, sitting down is not the most ideal way to support my body. So right now we're in 2021. I decided this year that when I didn't need to sit down, I would stand up. Mm. So when I present or do videos and things now, I'm standing up, which is what I'm doing right now mm. to help my back. Yeah, we need to keep moving. We need to keep moving around, don't we? So in your in your sessions, you we obviously do you obviously do stretches and stretches that help you know your back and buttocks and all of that. And you then you do your core stability work and your back strengthening work and your strengthening work for your whole body. Um, are there any aspects you've, you do you just find it all really helpful, or are there particular bits you personally have found helpful? This, um, you know, last year and this year. Upper back because that's the bit that you know doesn't you know gets most uh, constricted I guess by online working. Um, so the top half of my body is the bit that um, needs movement needs to be yeah it just needs to be moved. So I love the twists um, or anything that twists my spine um, where you know the bottom half is staying still and the top part of my back moves I really yeah. like all those kinds of things and just movement actually just gentle simple movement you know allowing the discs of my spine to move um yeah I like all of it actually there's nothing really about Pilates that I don't like there's no exercises that I go oh no it's not that bit now. Uh, <laughs> all of it yeah it's really good and and as you know, we we add um, we bring in positive affirmations into class and also angel cards. How do you find which we pick one together now? A positive affirmation. Of course, yeah. I mean, it's lovely. I mean, I it's the way I work as well. Being someone that works with nature and flowers and trees, it's one of the ways that we work as flower essence practitioners is to use oracle work. We, you know, we pick cards to guide us. So. I'm very in tune with all that kind of thing. And because I usually do it myself, it's really nice to have someone do it for me. Yeah, so you get your card every class whilst you're stretching, don't you? So I thought I'd pick really nice, pick a card for, we can have a chit chat about it, the best positive affirmation card message to come up today from my Happy Kids card. And, um, and then you at home can think about what it means to you or wherever you're listening. So best card message for today's podcast. Feeling this one. Oh, how funny. It, I lie down to relax. I lie on my back, knees bent, arms at shoulder height and relax. Mm. Yeah, well, it's the perfect way. I often, um, if I've had a long day at my desk, um, 
you'll often find me at the end of my day lying on the living room floor in that kind of position and I just lie there for five ten minutes before dinner or before I go to bed I often do that as well I just get my body into you know back feeling more comfortable so yeah it's one of my favorite things to do and I <laughs> highly recommend it yeah it's really good and you don't have to have had a lesson to you know have a lie down but have a lie down give yourself permission today <laughs> but whatever that means to you and, and you can you know not just in the body but in the mind just really recharging and just breathe and relax with it it's absolutely and I, I think as well by taking part in your classes and by you encouraging us to do short as well as doing the longer classes but to you know take a break you know it's yeah. one of your things isn't it just, even if it's like two breaths take a break so when I teach day long workshops and you know we take a five ten minute break what I often do I have a space behind my desk just here which fits my body so you'll often find me lying there I've got a cushion there with my head I've got just enough room to move my legs so I'll often use my five ten minute break as a teacher just lying on the floor that's so I've that's something I've taken away from your classes as well yeah it's really it's really helpful isn't it just little snippets just you know like five breaths here two breaths there four breaths there ten breaths there or have you say as you say have a little lie down have a little stretch move around have a walk yeah just incorporate it into your lifestyle makes a huge difference <laughs> yeah it's not my you know my mum says it's like you know she does it all all day long but I don't, you know not literally doing a class all day long but you know, you can be mindful about how you're sitting, standing, walking, moving, getting out of bed in the morning, like you say, five minute break, 10 minute break. Actually, you can just be, go on your emails, but you don't want to go on your emails. You know, you might be in, the, like you say, you're in the middle of a busy training day or something and oh, recharge your time for you. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something I, I might have gone to lie down before, but I wouldn't have done it with the consciousness of resting my back. Mm. so I might go oh my back's a bit achy I think I'm going to go lie so I'd lie there whereas now because of what you've taught me I lie there and I do exactly like my six minutes I lie down I start with deep breathing and then I go through almost like the six minutes that we do in the mornings yeah and it's perfect for that five minute break and when I stand back up again I'm different yeah. my body's more comfortable yeah yeah, exactly. And you just meet much more recharged in your mind as well, aren't you, and everything? Yes, the, the, the breath part of it is, is, is key, I think. And just being the consciousness, you know, just doing it, doing things consciously rather than mindlessly. Yeah, we did some nice counting breathing today, didn't you, in class? That was nice. Yes. It helps you switch off, concentrate, and just be in that, as you say, being constant in that moment. Yeah, I mean, I'm somebody that has quite an active mind, so anything that can help me, like just very simple counting breaths, it's, it's good for somebody, but I think it's good for everybody, but it's particularly really? good for somebody like me that has yeah. a naturally active mind. Yeah, some of us have very busy brains, and um, I. it's interesting, somebody... Uh, I chatted to you on the podcast um, the other day. It was like, sometimes I can really switch off and sometimes I just, my mind's so busy thinking about this and that and this and that. But it really, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter because you always still, whatever, you still become into a better space from it, no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. We get, we get what we need, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Especially when we plug ourselves into... A held space which you hold obviously you hold it as a Pilates expert but also with your background and with the angels and all that kind of thing that's as I kind of I think I said to you at the beginning you know even if it might not be the way that you you know present your classes to me it was just like wow a Pilates teacher who also works with the angels how cool is that I know. Do you know, I might just wave my book at everyone today because a few of you watch, some of you watch on YouTube, most of you listen to my podcast. But yeah, I am author of I Talk to Angels, which I'm so proud of, so proud of. And um, this year we brought the angel cards into class. Should we pick an angel card now? Absolutely. Yeah. 
so this is really lovely so when you're stretching you can ha either have your positive affirmation or you can have your angel card and of course in the podcast I will always from now on from this year on <laughs> always um will pick you an angel card as well before going into a gorgeous meditation which we'll talk about the theme of the meditation with Sarah in just a sec um, and then you can enjoy that to indulge in that relaxation at the end today. So these are my angelic meaning cards, my deck of angel cards, which I wrote with my guardian angel at, um, at a beach hut actually in Dorset. And then I photographed and wrote the messages for you in the sand. Apart from one message, I photographed in the woods in Hertfordshire and these very beautiful, amazing woods. So best message today, please, for you. This one's really jumping out, the love message, I love you. And it says, love yourself, say to yourself, I love you. <laughs> speak with love, say silently love before you speak and more love will appear in your life. So I always say in class, what does that mean to you today? I don't go into a full on angel card reading. I, I want to empower you with thinking about what it means to you that day, even though angel card readings are amazing. So Sarah, anything about the lovely love message today? Well, what comes to me, well, I mean, it's, it's part of my own work for myself and obviously what I do for others. I think of Rose Quartz when I, when I think of love and self-love, <laughs> um, my own personal journey. Yeah. Hey, you got one as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my own personal journey is, is a bit and is continues to be about loving myself more. And uh, my latest <laughs> definition of this for myself and obviously others is that self-love obviously is about eating well taking care of ourselves and you know exercise and all of those things the sort of normal things um but in the last few years it's what self-love has really come home to me to mean is about accepting not accepting all of us are here with specific gifts. We're here with specific um, mm. inspirational stories mm. to share about our lives, um, which may have been challenging for us, but we've come through them and become stronger as a part of it. Mm. And so many of us, myself included, have um, spent many years comparing ourselves to others, trying to be like other people and it didn't work for me at all because it pushed me into this striving mode so the more that I have journeyed with my own just story of self-love it's really about just allowing myself to be myself and become myself mm. um, and share what it is that I'm here to share um, mm. and live my life in the way that I'm here to live and that's completely different from everybody else's life um it's a tricky one it has been for me but yeah so that's that's what self-love means to me yeah that's lovely it's interesting it's, it feels like there's a perfect synchronicity with my I talk to angels podcast today because I've just interviewed author Anna Grace Taylor and we are talking about the messages from her um, new angel book and it was the message was about be yourself and I think I think yeah I think that's one of the biggest gifts you can give yourself with with um, the love message um, is is being yourself I think it's such a beautiful one I feel fully myself in myself and my work this year but in full alignment and wow when you get to that point and you're talking about passion and that's part of love if you're you know you have the passionate in your life and your work and you're kind of onto a, a bit of a self-love and life and love winner aren't you yeah it's it's really you know when I love myself enough I will allow myself to become myself you know it's like one of those things that we probably all heard and we all know what it means but you know it drops into different layers mm. and yeah I, I work with so many women and a few men just like myself, who spent years striving to be something that we're not. Yeah. And it sets us up with stress, you know, and all the patterns that may go on to affect the body, but, you know, all the emotional problems and challenges. 
And, and when we start to actually look at the beliefs that we're holding, that we're not good enough, we're not worthy, you know, all of those things, it's sometimes the easiest thing to do is just say, well, this is what I do today. I choose to love myself exactly as I am. Mm. I choose mm. to love myself exactly as I am. Mm. So you can enjoy listening to that at home too. If you love those words, write them down and stick them up and feel it and say it to yourself today. Maybe Sometimes that's the day when I might sit down and cry, you know, because that's how I feel, you know, because I'm sad. Other days I might be, you know, more inspired to be more active. I'm somebody that works very much with the lunar cycles and the season. Yeah. So I'm very au fait with the fact that sometimes our lives are in winter. Sometimes our businesses are in winter mode and sometimes they will be in summer mode. Nothing ever stays the same when it's not supposed to. Yeah, that's so true. And in today's, um, to finish, in today's relaxation and meditation, we're going to do a beautiful five minute meditation. Do you want to just say what inspired today's meditation that's coming up for you next? Yeah. Where you love to go. Yeah, well, you asked me for my favorite place in nature. I was like, oh, that's a tough one. So I thought about it for a while. And then what I, I just needed to say, well, I don't really have a favorite place. It could be anywhere where there's an oak tree or oak trees. Oak, oats have been my ally for a long time. One of the things that I wanted, um, obviously we have land here is one of the reasons we moved to France because in the UK land is expensive and difficult to get hold of. Here it's not. And uh, I wanted to buy a house that had four oak trees, had four oak trees. And when we got to the house and we walked around the land, there were four oak trees. And I was just like, wow. So there's a big one and, and smaller ones as well. So when I want to recharge during the day, in the summer, usually, I'm not a cold weather person, mm. I will go and sit under my oak tree. Mm. I call it oak time. Mm. And is there anything that's just so recharging? So we're gonna, I'm gonna do, my, do my best to recreate this for you as much as possible in the meditation for you in a moment. Are there any, are there any kind of benefits of the oak that can be infused into the meditation stage you feel as a practitioner yeah i mean oak is um a very well-known flower well it's not a flower it's a tree essence yeah oak if we look into the law around oak um it's, it's usually a masculine when we talk about king oaks oaks live for a very 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 long time and they hold they look after birds, they look after insects, they're great caretakers and they can live for hundreds of years. Um, so they're associated with longevity, they're associated with being strong even when you're caring for others. Um, for me, they, I've used oak essence and literally standing with oaks and talking to oaks for years Oaks have very strong uh, and wide trunks. So I think for me, they bring in solidity. It's like the spine that I don't particularly have. They've got this big, long root, mm. big, wide root system. And they're great places for us to go because oaks naturally take care of other people. It's what they do. They love to shelter, they love to harbor. And that includes us as humans. So they're very, very happy for all of us just to go and sit, place our back against their trunk, you know, drop down into their deep roots, have shade in the summertime. They're very happy to kind of transmute any tired, any, any energy and give and regenerate, help us regenerate. Mm, lovely. I think nature's just the best, really. So yeah, that's that's where we're. That's that's every, that's what has inspired this meditation and relaxation for you, which is coming up now. So the little, the little acorns as well, which are very symbolic of um, new beginnings as well. You know, the oak, the mm. acorn is the beginning of a big oak tree. Mm. That's lovely. 
is it a place you set your intentions as well then yeah every new moon I set intentions and if I have I often tuck I write them out and then I tuck them in into the earth around the root and around the uh, oak oh that's so lovely <laughs> this meditation is going to be special <laughs> it's going to be really special well that is just gorgeous thank you so much for today's Sarah and so where can everyone find you on your website in case anyone's inspired to get in touch yeah my website is my name it's www.sarahestelle.com it's Sarah without an H yeah lovely and um have you got a takeaway tip or a parting word for, for you listening that you'd like to, to share before we go oh. Oh gosh, there's so many I things. I, I think say. we've said it all already, but you know, yeah. I think it's one thing. Yeah. Um, I think most people have connections with nature. So to me, the nature kingdom is just like you and me. They are living, breathing beings. They have a consciousness all of their own. But they're very here for us right now um, for many, many reasons. So the next time you go outside, whatever reason, even if you live in a city or if you have like pots on your balcony, those plants have, uh, have consciousnesses. Is that, is that a plural? Have a consciousness just yeah. like us. <laughs> yeah. So honor them as that, you know, they will support you. They're here to help you. Um, and they're very, very happy to support us um, as we go through this difficult time on this planet, but also any difficult times in our lives there very very happy to exchange energy with us mm. when you said yeah when you just said that I got all tickles on my head it's like the angels are tickling my head to encourage that nature time yeah just to mm. see I mean look, we all know that they're alive but they also have a consciousness mm. um, and we can interface with that consciousness and it's often I guess it's very similar to working with angels they're not gonna you know you're not gonna hear the voice in the 3D, that you'll hear a whisper in your heart. Mm, lovely. That could well be the nature being speaking to you. Yeah, lovely. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, Sarah, for coming today. And uh, we're going to go into a gorgeous, gorgeous oak tree relaxation, five minute meditation for you now. And uh, Sarah, thank you so much. Well, thank you for inviting me. That's all right. It's been a pleasure. Right. And enjoy your meditation now. Just get yourself all comfy for meditation and enjoy. Welcome to the oak tree meditation and relaxation for you. So get really comfortable for relaxation and meditation and close your eyes, sitting or lying down. Either place your hands on your heart or wherever is comfortable for you. Breathe and relax. Simply breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth, relax. Relaxing more and more on each out breath. And you've been transported in your mind to this most magical, beautiful place in nature. You're surrounded by green and oak trees. You get a chance now to sit this, next to this most magnificent oak tree. And there are three other oak trees surrounding. This particular oak tree has welcomed you to sit next to it. And you can just really, really relax there and rejuvenate. And just breathe and relax. The oak tree looks after the birds and the insects. And they live for so, so long. So much longevity and strength and inner strength. And they can give you that beautiful inner strength too and help you recharge your batteries. They can help you be strong. They are strong. And in unison, you can become stronger together as you breathe and relax. Breathing in through your nose 
breathing out through your mouth, relax. And it gives you more inner strength that when you're looking after others, you have more inner strength to both be strong for yourself and be strong for others. The tree trunk and the roots into the ground are really solid and strong. And you are really solid and strong too. The oak tree helps look after other people and helps look after you. It can give you shelter, it can give you comfort, and give you strength, and give you courage. And in the summertime, it can give you shade. Breathe and relax. And breathe naturally now. And when you're feeling tired, you can rejuvenate under the oak tree, you can rejuvenate in nature. You can recharge your batteries. Breathing in fresh, sparkly energy. Breathing out any stagnant energy and stress and just let it go. And this time take a deep breath in. And any stress and negativity, just blow it away into the fresh air and that will just go into love and light and peace and serenity. tree can support you, this beautiful oak tree. It's the full moon right here right now and the temperature is still lovely and warm and you can now see this full, this beautiful, beautiful in the sky, a new moon. It's really, really lit up and this kind of deep blue sky. There are stars in the sky and it's a chance for you to set a beautiful intention and wish. Something you'd love to bring into your life and just say thank you for whatever this might be and in your mind allow yourself to actually picture writing this intention down. And this beautiful, beautiful, high quality paper. And you're going to tuck this into the soil, giving thanks for this intention coming true. And just daydream for a few moments about this. Visualize what this will be like, this coming true. Breathe and relax. And breathe and relax. It's a beautiful day, it's a beautiful evening now. The moon is shining. It's time for a fresh, sparkly start for you, a new beginning. You are rejuvenated. Recharged your batteries and re-energized, feeling more peaceful, calm and happy. Take a deep breath in or yawn now. As you exhale, wiggle your fingers and your toes. You're sitting or lying down, just roll or turn your head side to side a couple of times. Shrug your shoulders up to your ears, drop them down. If you come up to sitting, circle your shoulders a few times and then slowly open your eyes and well done today and lots and lots of love. How are you feeling after the relaxation meditation to the oak tree? Wasn't that lovely? So thank you, Sarah, that was inspired by you today. But I really hope you've enjoyed this at home or wherever you've been listening and really hope you took the time to just no multitasking and just take that time for you for that relaxation and meditation because it's so nice doing that. <laughs> it's so, so nice. It's so, so nice. So yeah, a completely different type of relaxation meditation today. I think that's what's lovely about all the different guests coming along is uh, different angles of relaxation and meditation can come along. And uh, 
yeah of course um sarah is a is a mindfulness pilates client of mine also a wonderful business friend and yeah it's just lovely to get different angles of people's mindfulness pilates journeys and um, different things it's helping with but also to bring a different angle of relaxation and meditation for you as well because Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> Although don't you find you love some things like really regularly and then it's good to, you know, do something different and um, do different meditations too. I think there were some wonderful words of wisdom that came in today in the chat with, with Sarah. So maybe you might want to listen to it again and get a pen, you know, and a notepad out. Perhaps you're going to create a mindfulness Pilates podcast with a special notebook um, because there might be you know, certain tips or um, affirmations or, or certain things that really stood out for you or action steps you might want to take from today's podcast. But I hope it's helped and inspired you in some way and really, really look forward to seeing you next time. Lots of love. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mindfulness Pilates podcast please rate and review on your podcast platform. You can access my free healing meditation and Pilates to ease back pain in three minutes on my website. You can also book your reduced back, back pain to feel good one-to-one -one mindfulness Pilates program on Zoom or mindfulness Pilates membership by going to mindfulnesspilates.com.